Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. We worship you today, Father. We worship you. Living word. Living word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the way from Denima Studio, Georgetown, Guyana. Hallelujah. Good morning, man. Good morning, Miss Freeburn. Thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. Listening to the song Living Word. Hallelujah. All my hope is in you. Thank you, Jesus. All my hope. All my hope is in you. Where was your hope today? Is it in your self, in your own wisdom, in your own material things of this world? world? I trust that your hope is in God. Hallelujah. It's a living word. Hallelujah. Mm. The word of God will lift me. The word of God will lift me. Hallelujah. Our strength comes from the word of God. All my hope. All my trust is in you. you are my word. Yes. I was lean in Jesus' name. Redeemer, my healer, my strong tower. Protector, defender. The living word, Redeemer, my healer, my strong tower. My living word, Redeemer. Oh yes, he's our redeemer. He's our healer, protector, redeemer. Yes. Mm. Redeemer, my healer, strong tower. My living word. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. You my defender. Hallelujah. All my hope is in you. All my trust in you, are Lord. Lean on your holy word. All my hope. My trust is in God. Yes, Lord, you are my living word. I would lead in Jesus' name. My hope is in God. My trust is in God. You are my living word. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that our hope is in you. Glory to God. Our trust is in you, Father. And today I pray that if there's anyone whose trust is in, in their material things, their trust is in their job, trust is in their spouse, their trust and hope in their, their children or their horoscopes or what the soothsayer, soothsayer may say to them, Father, I pray that they will come to know, Father, that the only one we could depend on, that we could trust and know that he's going to work on our behalf is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords which is our God, the omnipotent God, the only God, the only true and living God. And so today, Lord, I say uh, together with my saints, brothers and sisters, that all our hope is in you. Our trust is in you. We depend on you. And we want to say thank you, Father, for being the great I am, being the omnipotent God. You are the almighty God. You are the Prince of Peace. And we thank you today, Father for being there for us. We thank you for taking care. We thank you for providing. You are our all in all, and we just want to say thank you. 
to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be blessing, glory, honor, and power. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be blessing, glory, honor, and power. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be blessing, glory, honor, and power. We exalt you today, Father, because there is none like you. And we put all our hope, all our trust in you because, God, we know that we can depend on you. So we give you praise. We give you praise. We just give you praise, Father. We just exalt your name. We exalt you, Father, today. We say thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy, for all that you've done, Father. And many of us, Lord, may be looking back at our lives and we be approaching the ending of the year. And then we may be discouraged because the things that we'd hoped to accomplish, we didn't. But Lord, I pray today that we will come to you, put all our hope, all our trust in you because you are the great I am. You know what all things and you have plans for our lives. Your plans are best, are the best plans that we can ever hope for and, and, and believe for. So Father, we, I pray today that those of us uh, who don't know you would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Those of us who've trusted in material things or trusted in our jobs or trusted in someone else, we would put our trust and confidence in you because you are our living word. So Lord, today, bless your word into our hearts as our children go out to school. We thank you. We decree and declare that our children are covered by the blood of Jesus. No evil will befall them. No plague would come near them, Father, because our angels, you have given your angels charge over them to keep them in all their ways. So we decree and declare our children will have a good day. They will not be harmed. No hurt will come nigh them because the angels of the Lord and camp round about them. And I thank you for us as adults, parents, as we go to work further. We thank you that we are covered by your blood. We thank you, Father, that we will remember in all our ways to acknowledge you and you will direct our paths. So we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. To him who sits on the throne. And unto the Lamb be blessing, glory, honor, and power. Say it with me, someone. To him who sits on the throne, which is God, the omnipotent God, the almighty God. And unto the Lamb be blessing, glory, honor, and power. Let's, let's, let's entertain. Let's, let's just have ourselves in an attitude of praise, regardless of what's going on. Let's just praise God. Let's just thank him. Let's just exalt him because he's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Oh, I get excited when I think about the names of God. We've been doing the names of God, and this is the 10th one we're at today. But before we do that, I would like to share with us our confession. The confession for our children today is taken from Philippians 4, uh, 8, and it's the second part. Yesterday, we did the first part, Philippians 4, 8a, and we could, today we'll do Philippians 4, 8b. It says, I will fix my mind on things that are virtuous excellent and praiseworthy again i will fix my mind on things that are virtuous excellent and praiseworthy yesterday the verse was whatever things are lovely whatever things are beautiful whatever things are pure whatever things are of good report if there be any virtue any praise i will think on those things and today i will fix my mind on things that are virtuous excellent and praiseworthy what does that word virtuous means it means some anything that is righteous, anything that is good, anything that is moral or pure, having or showing high moral standards. Someone who's upright. So as children, I encourage you, whatever, let's focus. Try your best to think on things that are good, regardless of what may come your way today, regardless of what you may be in. Look for the positive. Confess God's word over that situation. Remember, there's death and life in your town, power of the town, death and life. So even though there's a bad situation, you may be in need of something. One of the things you could confess is, my God shall supply all my needs. So we think on good things. Do not think on the negative things that may come your way. You think on those things and you will see a turnaround in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the confession for us adults, and as I always say, we can also confess the children's adult, children's confession, sorry. So the confession for us adults comes from 2 Corinthians 7, 1. It says, I will cleanse myself from everything that defiles my body and my spirit, and I will strive for holiness because I fear God. I love this verse. And this verse ties into what we'll be talking about today. It says again, I will cleanse myself from everything that defiles my body. 
in spirit. And as I say this first, I want us to look at ourselves. Is there anything in my, in my life that defiles my body? Anything that I'm thinking about, I'm about to do. Is there anything that defiles my body and my spirit, man? So let's say, God, I'm going to cleanse myself from everything that defiles my body and my spirit and strive or I will pursue, I will pursue holiness because I fear God. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. If we have a fear of God and we want to honor God, we would want to live a life of holiness. And that brings us to our name of God that we'll be doing today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is awesome. He is awesome. Knowing the names of God and the power in each name is, 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 uh, so I'm just getting my notes up right here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So far, we've covered nine names. Today's the 10th. Elohim, our creator, the God of gods. Jehovah Shabbat, the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies. Jehovah Jireh, we know that the Lord ma provide. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth me. The Lo Jehovah Shama, the Lord is present. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace peace in the midst of a storm. Hallelujah. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, my banner, is my victory. He, I just rejoice in him. Yes. Jehovah Raha, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There is no lack in my life. Even though it may appear in the natural, we confess the word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Jehovah Tiskidudu, Kiskidu, sorry. The Lord, my righteousness. Jehovah tent today is the tent one. Jehovah Mecca, the Lord who smites. Hmm. Jehovah Mecca, the Lord who smites in disciplines or the Lord who corrects. Now, what's the word smite means? Smite means to hit, to 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 um, pull down or to. Um, it says there to discipline or to correct. God really smites. He hurts us. Do does God really hurt us? No, he doesn't. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 9 that says, I will turn my eyes away and show no pity. I will repay you for all your detestable sins. Then you will know that it is I, the Lord, who is striking the blow, the Lord who smites. And you may say, of all the names of God, is there one that says the Lord who smites? Before I move on, I want to share two stories with you. And they're both true stories. A little, a little child, well, he was, how old, at what age? I think he was at 12 when he shared his testimony, you know, in a Sunday school class. He, um, he, was, he was brought up in a Christian home. His parents taught him the right thing, but he decided, um, some of his friends told him some, some type of game they had. It was one of these handheld games. And he, his parents could, told him at that time they, would not, they, were, they were not going to purchase that game for him. So he decided when he went into the store because he was pressured by his friends to go and steal her. When his parents found out, thank God his, his mother found out at the time before he left the store, so he was able to take it back before going through checkout. Uh, he got home and his father disciplined him. He got a good discipline and the father said, I'm doing this because I love you. You will no more think of stealing because you know, and he showed him from the word of God, what the word of God said. He said, you will be, br I've brought you up in the things of God, your mom and I, and you will steal no more in the name of Jesus. He said, you will not end up in jail. And he sat him down and taught him, showed him what were the consequences of doing that. Just wanted to satisfy that desire because all his friends had it instead of waiting and when his parents could afford it. And he said, since I got that discipline from my dad, as some people would call it a whooping, this, these days the children would call it, he said, I never thought of even picking up something again. I learned my lesson. Now that discipline, he said, it was painful and I didn't want to go through that again. But when I thought, when my father told me the consequences of what I did, what would happen to me, and I think of me being in jail, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get another a whooping from my dad again, no way. So that, he said, that caused him not to do that anymore, and he lived an upright life. Now, there's another story, another true story of a young man. He was an adult, and um, while growing up as a child, he got into numerous trouble. He was always 
People complain of him stealing. People complain of him fighting to his, of stealing and lying to his mom. And his mom would say, okay, I'll take care of it. I'm going to discipline him. And she got home and she did never said to her child, well, Johnny, that's wrong. I'm just using that name. I don't want to use the word. Yet she never corrected her child. He grew up to be a man. And one day he robbed a woman. And in the middle of rob in the midst of robbing a woman, retaliated and he killed the woman. He was sentenced to death. He was sentenced to death. And the day, because there were so many other cases that, that you know, so many things he did in the past, but this one was the limit, and so he was sentenced to death. And that day, before he died, he said his mother was there, and before they sentenced, before, I think it was the gas chamber, before they gave it to him, he said, may I talk to my mom? And she came, he said, mom, come a bit closer. And she came, he said, come a bit closer, I wanna whisper. And he um, whispered into her ears, if you had corrected me when I was a child, I would never be dying today. This would never happen to me. And he bit his mom on the ear. He bit her on the ear. Now, here are two stories. She, maybe this mother taught, I don't know what she taught, why she thinks she shouldn't correct her child or why she didn't discipline her child. She taught maybe what, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I didn't want to inflict, um, give him a whooping. I don't know what she thought. But you see here, there are two individuals, one parent, as the, as we say back in the day, let it in the bud. When it happened, he disciplined his child. He sat him down and told him, this is where you would end up if you do. And if you do it again, I'm going to whoop you again. He learned the lesson. He said, it was painful, but I learned my lesson. I learned it not to do that again. This other young man who was left to carry on the way he was, no discipline, no correction. He had an early end. He died because in stealing, he killed someone. Now, you may say, why, why do I share these stories? Because some people may say, how could God discipline? Why would God smite you? Why would God do this and that to you? Now, you see, God loves us. God loves us. And he sent his son, Jesus, on the cross. Because remember, we were all born in, born in sin. After Adam and Eve sinned, we were all born in sin. And so Jesus, he was smitten. He took that on the cross for us so that we could come to know the Lord. But then sometimes, some of us, after we get to know the Lord, we kind of stray like this, like this young guy whose parents taught him in the things of God, but he listened to company and he went astray and he did that act of stealing. And so sometimes people, some people who claim to know the Lord are uh, because maybe sometime in our life we are in a tight spot. Like one man said um, of a friend of his who was a born again believer, uh, she was in a tight spot financially and she started stealing from the company. Now, as a child of God, what she should have done is go to God in prayer and say, God, help me, you know, show me a way out or, you know, wait on God. But, and she got caught and the consequences were bad. Now, we know God and we drift from God. And so there are times when, because, because you see, God is a God, he loves us. And the Holy Spirit would always caution us. If you are a child of God and you know, if you want to be honest with yourself, you know there are times when you were indulging in something that was wrong, you would have that inner, that inner voice would be nudging at you. You know, Lois, that was wrong. You should not have done it. And the Holy Spirit can fix us. But then sometimes some people, they, 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 what should I say? They kind of like what they do. For instance, you know, um, and you may have known of people. It's like this young man. He continued through the years doing from a child and he became an adult. That was his lifestyle. That, that was his job of stealing from people and hurting people. And he ended up, he had to be, his life was cut short because of that. And so some people think, oh, I could get away with it. I'm going to do it. Or, oh, they too naive. They too stupid. And so they look for people that are maybe easygoing or people that are, um, forgiving and they take advantage of them and they continue to whatever whether they hurt them with words um they word them emotionally with their words or whether they continue to steal from or whatever they do but they continue in that behavior and even people who don't know the lord they continue in certain behaviors that is that is not good and so god here the prophet was in ezekiel the prophet ezekiel he was telling the people as i read that verse let me get that verse again. The people of God, they were not walking according to God's instructions. 
They were in disobedience. They were in rebellion. And God said, in Ezekiel 7, 9, this is the Lord saying to them, I will turn my eyes away and show no pity. Because you see, the only time judgment comes like this is after God has warned us. He has sent people. And some of you, even as I speak, you may have been doing some things and God may have been talking to you, but you decided, nah, I'm enjoying this and you continue to do what you're doing. So God first talks to you. And then he may send a man or a woman of God to talk to you. And some of you today, this may be me talking to you. The God is using me to talk to you. And then some, some people, they would hear that and they would continue in what they're doing. But eventually, there are times when the Lord is going to lift that grace and allows negative things to come into your life to get your attention. You may say, why would he do that? Why? Because he loves you like a father, a good father or mother would love a child and discipline them like that father disciplined the child. He said, you are not going to go to jail. You, you have a life ahead of you. God has given us a plan for you and you following these paths, this is where it's going to lead you. So a little pain on his little buttocks, a little pain, it would hurt, but it, the discipline, it, 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 it worked out in the long run. It avoided him from continuing down that line. And it's the same way God said here, I will turn my eyes away and show no pity. When, 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 when the things are coming against you, I will turn my eyes, show no pity. I will repay you for all your detestable sins. Then you will know that it is I, the Lord who is striking the blow, the Lord who smites, the Lord who smites. And let me see. The first time, I'm going to see, the first time this word was used was in Genesis 8.21. When God said, in Genesis 8.21, it spoke of the people, they were living in sin. And we know God spoke to Noah and he told Noah, Noah warned them that God is going to flood the earth because, I mean, things have gotten so bad. I mean, all the... The, all the type of sins that you could think of was going on in those days. And so Noah warned the people. They didn't listen. And so God flooded the earth. And then he said in Genesis 8, 21, God said he would not smite every living thing again as he had done in the flood. So that's where the word came. The word, the first word, Neka, Neka is used in the Old Testament in Genesis 8, 21, when God said, so that's derived, Neka, the word Mecca is derived from that word. And the word Jehovah Mecca is spelled M-A-K-K-E-H, Jehovah Mecca, meaning, and God, it, it, the first time it happened was in Genesis 8, 21, the first time this word is used, God said, he would not smite every living thing again as he had done in the flood. Exodus 9, 31 and 32, the writer uses the word when it's re referring to Pharaoh's disobedience, which caused God to smite the flax and the bud and the barley and the ear and the spear and the wheat and the spell. Now, the first time when this word is used, when God said, I would no more smite, I would not smite every living thing. God smote them by bringing the flood and they died. They perished. They didn't listen. But before God smites or before God brings correction or before he brings judgment, he always, there's always a warning. There's always someone he sends to correct you. And why? Because God is a holy God. And as a child of God, you may be going through situations and, and, and um, you've been indulging in sin and God has been talking to you. And, and you come into God to help you. You have a financial need. And you say, well, I've been praying for God to help me. He's not helping me. But you're still in that sinful lifestyle. And you say, well, this thing I'm working, God not answering my prayer. And God is just wait, withholding that because, you know, if God continues to give you everything you ask for and you continue in that sinful way, you know the answer, you would end up in hell. And you see, God loves you. So sometimes he withholds certain things from you to get your attention. Uh, it's like a way of correction so that instead of you getting all these things and, and not turning away from that sinful act and end up going to hell when you die, he wants to get your attention. And so correction comes so as to, so you could turn away from that sinful act or that sinful lifestyle and come to know God. So it may be a little painful, but in the end, consider a little pain now as opposed to burning the set in hell. The fire quench it not. It's not that you could get a glass of water or, the, or you would be burned and, 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 and that's it. No, it's a continuous thing. Can you imagine what type of pain that is for eternity? So which would you prefer? That eternity of pain. And some of you may say you don't believe in hell, but that's okay. 
regardless of what we believe, it's the truth. And the truth shall set you free. So it's on. It's towards your good. It, it, it's 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 towards your benefit for you to believe. So regardless of whether or not you may believe there is a hell, there is one. And if you don't turn around and repent, you will one day go there. Sorry to say, but we don't want you to. That's why the Lord have us as women and men of God. And even I see some children ministering, which is so awesome and powerful. I always admire children ministering. He would have us bring in the word because God says. It's not his will that us should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's why you find, I mean, the word is being taught all over in all means. I mean, some of you don't want to go to church. You get it on TV and you get it on Facebook. You get it any part, social media, the word, anywhere you look, the word is there. And why? And some of you are like, I'm tired of these questions. Oh no, please don't say that. It's because God loves you and he's bringing the word to you in, all, in different ways. You know, some people, they may like um, certain type of music and, and the Lord is using people with that in music, in the form of music to bring the word to you. So that's the God that we have as we serve, a loving God. And he wants to, 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 he doesn't, hell was not made for us human beings. No, it was not made for us. But you see, when they, when, when Satan, Lucifer sinned and God threw him out him and the angels with him that was for him and so he's the one that keeps bringing all these thoughts to you and he's encouraging you always shows you the, the gratification for the now right now oh, you want to do it now you go ahead have fun go party go get involved in promiscuous and promiscuous lifestyle sit down there and enjoy all that pornography while your wife is in bed waiter than you and you have no desire for oh enjoy that pornography and, and whatever even single people and you get yourself into things that just corrupts your system as the word says you will refrain from anything that would defile your body, your spirit. And so as a child of God, what is it that you're looking on a TV? When you look at that, whatever it is, or on your phone or whatever, does it glorify God? How do you feel on the inside? Because as a child of God, anytime I step out of God's will or doing something, I get conviction. And I thank God for that. You see, God loves us. He would not let us go astray. And so coming back to this, uh, God smote, God said he would never smite again after the flood and he also said in exodus 9 31 and 32 he uses the word in reference because of pharaoh's disobedience which caused god to smite the flax in the bud and so did the crop would not would not produce god caused it not to produce because of pharaoh's disobedience he was warned he came, moses came to him he said god said let my people go so these are examples in where god smote the people he brought um, it's his way of correction, it's a way of, you know, getting their attention. And we look at the story of Pharaoh. After Pharaoh decided all of the plagues came and he decided that he would not let them go, God finally said, okay, Moses, get your children, get them ready. Tell them, you know, they're going to have the Passover, they have the meal, get themselves ready. And the last thing that came was when every forced born child, male, in, the, in um, Pharaoh's and the enemies of God, every firstborn male died. That's when Pharaoh said, okay, you guys could go, you could go, take your stuff and go. And they left. But just to show you, when we are gripped by sin and we have all these selfish motives and we are, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, and we are not yielded to God and we yield to the sinful and the lustful desires of our lives, we end up getting hurt badly. So even after he said, after all these plagues, and God said, he said, okay, go, uh, because his, his son died because of his disobedience. And as we all know the story, the children of Israel left. They came to the sea, and they said, how oh, what are we going to do, Moses? And God said to Moses, stretch for that rod. And he stretched for that rod, and we know the sea parted. The Lord allowed his children to walk through and dry ground. And, and, and you know, Pharaoh, after they left, he said, who's going to make straws out of bricks? Let's go get them. And he sent his army, you know, after all that God did. And they pursued God's people. Went through. And we know the story. Those of you who don't know, I go, and there they were walking through the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was coming. And you would think by now these people would know the power of the God of the people of Israel. You would think that they will. But that's what sin does. It blinds you and it makes you believe a lie. Well, oh, we're going to get through again. We're going to get them back. It's not going to happen. But I tell you, as the children of Israel got into the end, I mean, they saw them there. They, they also proceeded 
on the dry land as the children of Israel when they got to the end and and they were there in the middle of the sea hallelujah the Lord said Moses turned around and stretch forth your rod and we know what happened those the waters that stood up as two walls for the children of Israel it came back and it covered the army of Pharaoh drowned and even as I say this are you an individual who has been persecu perse persecuting a child of God? Been telling lies, been pushing, saying things, get this person's name all over the, 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 the neighborhood, all over their friends, tr get, trying to get people to um, not listen to them or trying to get people to hear them? Have you been someone who's been just doing things that are up because of jealousy of somebody's lifestyle? You want to hurt them? Especially if a child of God, as you've been doing, if you've been doing this to someone who knows God, a child of God, today is your warning. God is looking. And God is saying, just like I did with the people of Israel. Because you see, God, <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The Lord said, whatever is done unto the least of my brethren is done unto me. And as children of the Most High God, if someone is persecuting you today, whether it's on the job, whomever it is, pray for them. Do not wish them harm. Pray for them. Because, you know, God is talking to them. Pray that their eyes would be opened. Pray that they would not believe the lie of the enemy. Pray that they would be convicted and they would turn their, around. Excuse me. Ask God for forgiveness. Because we don't want to see the judgment of God on them. And so like in the Bible here, God judged these people after talking to them year after year, he allowed, he corrected them. And why God corrects us? Because he wants to save our souls. And as children of God, those of us who claim to know him and we say we have accepted God and we start sometimes we may, we may be in a backslidden state, meaning we've gone back into the world, start doing the things of the world. Some of you are singing in the choir and you live in a promiscuous lifestyle or you worship leader, whatever you're doing and you profess to be a child of God and you are mixing it with the, with the stuff of the devil. God is saying, no, I'm a holy God. I'm a holy God. And I would like you to respect that. And so this is God is saying, first of all, God expects us as even as, as he convicts us. First of all, we should look at ourselves each day and say, God, as David said, search me, O God. Know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. So we should be in a place as children of God that we should judge ourselves based on the word. We shouldn't wait for someone to come and say, well, Lois, you know, you've been messed, you're doing this thing and, and you, you're sinning, you, 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 you should not be doing that. No, we should be able to judge ourselves. And if it comes to the place where someone is correcting us and said, I noticed so-and-so, and you may say, that's the time for you to stop and think and say, okay, what did I do? What did I say? And if the, if the person misunderstood you, then you would correct it. Or if that person or somebody else sees it that way, then that's a time for you to stop and take check. Mm. If they like three, four people see the same type of thing in me, then I need to check myself with the word and really something is wrong. If so, if you know, if they're like, hey, 10 people telling you the same thing about yourself, don't be self-righteous and say, oh, no, me, oh, no, no, no. do you know who I am? I've been in the church for so many years. Oh, no, no, no. That's the time to say, okay, you take a check, go into the word of God, and you go before the Lord. And the Lord is going to show you what's going on. So we should be able to, with the word of God, every day ask the Lord, Lord, search me, search me. Know my heart, you know my heart, show me my, if there's things that I'm thinking of that is not of you, Lord. So first we judge, we, we should be able to judge ourselves. And then if someone comes and talks to you, then you would you should be able to listen to them and turn around and, and correct that act that you're doing and then sometimes as the bible says if someone offend you you speak to them if they don't you bring them to a second person then you take so if someone let's say the leader of the church approaches you regarding some type of lifestyle or something you're doing you need to listen because all of these god is using people to direct you to help you in looking at yourself and turn around our mirror our mirror is the word of God, the Bible. And that's why it's so important that we would spend time in the Bible each day. In the New Testament, Peter says in 1 Peter 4, 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Because you see, if we profess to be Christians, followers of God, the world is looking at us. And so when God is going to bring the word, whether it's through the pastor or someone, he's going to judge us. 
because we say we represent him and we would be a bad that would be a bad representation of him peter says um for the for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of god and if it first begin at us what shall the end be to them that obey not the gospel there is a judgment for all However, these judgments may be separated by months and years, of course, for the, Christ, for the Christian, our Lord has taken our judgment for sin. Isaiah 50, 50, I love this, Isaiah 53, 4, 5 says, Surely he, which is our Savior, had bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten, there is the word, smitten, of God. Jesus, mm. smitten of God and afflicted, afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgression. So you see, Jesus was also smitten. All right. He was wounded. He took that for us. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So Jesus was smitten for us. And so we should be so grateful and thankful that he has already done it. And that's where we come to him and we ask him to forgive us of our sins. And when he forgives us, we need to strive for holiness. We need to pursue holiness, pursue the lifestyle that God has for us, pursue a life that, that glorifies God, that honors God, that fears God. It's like somebody giving you a gift. And you just take it and throw it back in the face. So you take it, somebody give you a name brand sneakers and you're like, mm, this, and you took that, take that, they spend like $300 for sneakers and you take it and you put it in the mud and you stomp on it. That's what we do when we reject what Jesus did for us. That's it. How would you feel? You've got to, he's went through all that pain. That person worked hard and they saved the money. Uh, or, or some of them, Christmas is coming up and I hope you guys do. Some of them put themselves in expense. They use a credit card to give you, you keep saying you want this name brand sneakers or this name brand pocketbook and they give it to you. And then you just tear it up and you just put it in the mud. Oh, you think that person would feel? I worked so hard. And Jesus was smitten. Yes, he was smitten. So, so that, you know, we, we took the sins for us and so our reaction to him should be one of god thank you for taking those stripes and your thank you for going to the cross for me and because of that lord i want to live for you father lord on my own i can't but i need your word and that's why i encourage us all every day let's get into the word this is going to strengthen us this is what this is this is our guidance. This is this is gonna keep us on that path. Would prevent us from getting involved into pornography and, and all these sexual stuff that is not of God or whatever, stealing, lying, um, whatever. Whatever. There's some of you that are habitual liars. It's been something from a child, and, and no, your parents never knit it in the bud. And God is saying today. My daughter, you may think it's right, but I need her, son. I need you to change. Come to me. I could break that stronghold of lying, stronghold of stealing. I could break that. A troublemaker going and talking about one person with the other, turning that person against that other person. You grew up seeing your mother doing it, everybody, and you're doing it, and it's a mess, and you, you keep hurting people in the office. You keep hurting people in your family, and God is saying, bring it to me. And you may think it's okay. This is me all these years. I can't change. Do not believe the lie of the enemy. God wants to help you. God wants to help you. Jesus did it for us. And here again. Jesus, surely our Savior had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet he did esteem himself stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisements of our peace was upon him. Hallelujah. And with his tribes we were healed. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So my question to you today is, or I would have to say to you, take a look at yourself right now and ask yourself what I am about to do or what the things that I'm doing presently, 
does it show that I fear God? Does it show that I honor God? Does it show that I love God? Does it show that I appreciate what he sent his son to do for me? Or I'm just doing this thing to satisfy my own lustful desires, to satisfy the, the, the pleasures of life. This is a message for you to turn around, come to God. Yes, God is a loving God. And many of you may not want to accept that he's a loving God. He's a kind God. He's a, he's a jealous, but, but the thing about it, with all of God, God is a God, he's a holy God. And especially if you profess to be a child of his, he would not condone or encourage you in that behavior that speaks bad about his name, that speaks negative, that you're not a good representation of him, especially if you're in ministry, doing things of God, and your lifestyle says the different thing. So today I implore you, we speak about God, Jehovah maker the lord who smites i will turn my eyes away and show no pity i will replay you for all your detestable sins then you will know that it is i the lord who is striking the blow don't let's be like the children of israel after what god has done for them we spoke a few weeks ago where they turned to idols and god said because of that you would be into captivity for so many years remember we spoke about that Let's not be like the children of Israel. After what God has done for us, seeing what he has done, we decide to go back into the things of the world, get the idols, the things of the world. We don't spend time in the word. We spend so many hours on TV looking at our favorite program, spend so many hours in social media, and we don't spend two minutes reading the word. We have made social media our idols. We've made talking on the phone with your girlfriend an idol. Do not spend any time with God. All of these little things, and the, the enemy may make you think it's okay, everybody's doing it. But God says, I'm a holy God. And God, he would sometimes lift that grace and allow negative situations to come into your life as a form of correction. Remember that mother, that father, who disciplined a child when he did the wrong thing because he wanted to prevent him from ending up in jail. He wanted to prevent him from having a lifestyle that would not be good for him. Remember the mother who didn't discipline her child, what happened to that child. And so even as parents, Let's ask ourselves, am I, um, do I laugh at the things that my children do? You know, when children are cute, one, two year old, that's where it starts. It starts from when they're one and two year old. They do something that's wrong or they use a word and you say, oh, that's so cute. Or they're rude to their grandparents and you're like, oh, that's the way she said it is so cute. No, God says honor, honor. You need to honor your parents and even your grandparents. And so these are little things when we encourage them from little, from small, God is only as parents accountable for that. So we train them. So let's not look at things and smile at them when we know it is wrong. Because, you know, they will grow up. And if we don't turn, we change them. We don't encourage them to change from a little age. They would grow up, get into trouble, and their life would end up in disaster. So God loves us. And why would he allow certain things? He lifts his grace off many times to get our attention. He doesn't want us to keep going down that path to destruction. He wants us to turn around because if we keep going down, let's say if you keep going doing something that's wrong and nothing comes to alert you, you figure, oh, this is good. And you end up in eternal damnation and God doesn't want that. He loves you so much. So today I pray that this is an encouragement to you. Many times people like to hear, yes, God is loving and God is kind. And we will preach that too. But we also need to know that there is a God. God, our God, is a holy God. He is a holy God. And so, again, our confession for us adults, I will cleanse myself from everything that defiles my body and my spirit. And I will pursue, I will strive for holiness because I fear God. Especially if you're somebody professing to be a Christian, professing to be a child of God, in ministry, teaching a Sunday school class, singing in the choir, a usher in your lifestyle, and you know. So judge yourself based on the word. And if someone approaches you, don't be mad at them because they are, they're looking out for your soul. And if the leader of the church approaches you, repent. Repent. God loves you. So I will cleanse myself. Let's say that. I will cleanse myself from everything that defiles my body and my spirit. And I will pursue or I would strive for holiness because I fear God.
2 Corinthians 7 1. Lord, we thank you for your word. And I pray today, God, if there's anyone that is being living in a lifestyle that does not glorify you and thinking, oh, it's all fine and good. Or some may say, well, I'm young. I got to enjoy life. When I get old, I'm going to give my life to Christ. Lord, we don't know how old we're going to live for, how long. So I pray, Lord, they would not listen to the lie of the devil. They would not listen to the lie of the enemy because he knows he cannot enter into heaven. He got us kicked him out and he's trying to get as many individuals to go with him to hell. And so, Father, I pray that even those who know you have accepted you as Lord and Savior, if they have stepped back into the world, or if one foot is in the church, or I should say one foot is in doing the things of God, on Sunday they do what's right, and then Monday and the rest of the week they do their own kind of stuff. Lord, I pray that their eyes would be open. They would not allow the enemy to, to fool them or to lie to them anymore, but they will know that you are a God, Jehovah Maka. Maker, a Lord, the God who smiles, the Lord who corrects. So, Father, help us that we would first judge ourselves from your word and we would turn around, we would live our life as unto you. Help us, Lord, give us that desire for your word. And right now, I'd like to lead some of you, those of you who don't know the Lord, I would just like to lead you in a prayer of repentance so you could say after me, Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus, who was smitten for me, who took it all on the cross for me. I repent of all my sins, everything that I've done, the things that I've said, even the things that I've thought that was not of you, the things I'm thinking of doing. Take it away from me, Father. Create in me, God, a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Thank you, Father. I receive your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. And if you don't, if you don't, if you're not in a good Bible believing church, I would encourage you look in your neighborhood for a good Bible believing church. Get into the word every day. Spend some time in the word because this is where your strength comes from. Like we would eat our food every day, have a good diet so that we can be strong. Because if we don't eat for a week, you know what will happen. If we don't eat for a week, but if you fast as a child of God, that's different. But if you don't eat, starve yourself for a week, you're going to start getting sick. And if you go for a whole month, you might end up in the hospital. Likewise, if we don't read the word, this is our food. This is, gives us the energy. This gives us the strength to stay away from those movies, to stay away from the lying and the cussing and the backbiting and the um, going around making trouble, being a troublemaker. This is what's going to keep you. But if you stay away from this and you keep not good getting your spiritual food, you will end up from one thing after the other, which would lead to destruction. So I encourage you, get into the word. You do not have to stay an hour or two. It starts, start a little, that's five minutes a day. Read a word, get a Bible verse and memorize it, confess it. Every day I place a confession. I mean, Monday through Friday, I place a confession on Facebook. You could start that way using one of those verses to confess every day. There is power in the word of God. So I encourage you. So I'm going to play this song again living word because that's the one we could trust in and i want to thank my sister again denise harris for making this available to the world she she her studio denima studio in guyana south america they did some songs and she made it available to us so that we can play to the world and so this one is a living word living word and um hallelujah we're gonna sing that one thank you jesus uh Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Oh, we bless your name. We praise you, Father. Oh, glory to your name. You are our living word. Thank you, Jesus. It's coming. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for loving us, Father, to correct us. You know, the Bible says, better are the wounds of a friend than the kisses of an enemy. And so if someone may correct you, I always say to my children, and even while I taught at school, I always said to the children, if someone corrects you when you're doing something that's wrong, that shows that they love you. If someone sees you doing something wrong and they don't correct you, that's not your friend. That's not your friend. They would correct you because they want you to change. They want good things to come your way. And so... Living word, living word, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's taking its time, but it's coming. 
You are my life and my salvation. All my hope is in you. That's where we trust in the word. Don't trust in your friends. Trust in God. All my hope. You are my light and my salvation. My hope is in you. Yes, hallelujah. Don't trust in yourself. No, we can't trust in ourselves, but we trust in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All my hope is in you. All my trust. All my trust. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You are my living word. Yes. I would lean on Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, when troubles come, do not get into the attitude of despair or say negative things. Let the word of God come to you. The word of God will make you strong. All my hope is in you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You are the living word. And I will. Yes, when Jesus went to the cross, he redeemed us. Yes, Redeemer, my healer, strong tower, protector, defender, my living word. Yeah, yeah. my living word, strong tower. Yeah. We love you, Lord. Yes, you are. Feel my little Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Yes. All my hope. All my trust. Yes, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. All my hope. All my trust. You are the living word. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. All my hope. Is in you, Lord. All my trust is in you. You are the living word. And I believe in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining us. But before I go, I just want to share this testimony with you. <laughs> My God is awesome. Yes, he is. You know, we've been talking about the names of God. So yesterday, I didn't plan to to, to um, do this, but I last minute I decided to go to, um, I have a PayPal account. I use that to pay different people that, you know, different things. So I went to do a transaction. Actually, I was waiting on PayPal to return. Um, I tried several weeks ago when they, they gave me some security questions and told me I failed at the security questions, which was kind of interesting because I answered all of them correctly. But anyway, and they were going to be investigating it, blah, 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 blah. So I'm waiting for them to get back to me. So yesterday I needed to do a transaction. So I got there, I called, I Googled the number and everything looks like um, PayPal. So I called and this man came on the phone and then he said to me, someone is um, acting to your account and they took out $65 and blah, 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 blah. And it's in Ohio and the old story. And I'm listening to him and I, at that time I had my bank card and I said, okay, I'm going to take that off. And I, um, he said, but I'm going to work with you and we're going to refund that money. And um, Give me a few minutes, and he said, check your text. There's a refund of 60 something dollars, whatever, whatever. And um, 
So he said, uh, I said, what date did that happen? He said it was the previous day around 10, between 9 and 10. And something he said, oh, then he said, I'm going to give you my personal number just in case we get disconnected. My personal cell number and that like, huh, who does that? So that right there set off a red light. I'm like, mm -mm, this is not legit. So God is so good. So that was after um, I gave him my new credit card number to replace my bank card. And we got disconnected. And the phone rang and I saw this number. I didn't. And I know the number and it didn't. Then an 804 number, which is my area code, popped up twice. The first time I didn't. The second time I said, okay, let me answer it. Maybe somebody in my neighbor trying to get me. Guess who was on that line? The same man that said, you know, PayPal. And he said, um, okay, um, so in order for some, something, something, but soon as I saw that, you know, the, the, first I was alerted by this number he gave me that as a cell because nobody does that, give out this cell number. So then when I saw the 804, I'm like, uh-huh, got you. I didn't say that to him, but um, hello, I said, you know, I have to leave. I'll call you back. I have to leave. And ma'am, I'm um, okay. In order to get this transaction finished, you need to go get a card. And I, I just didn't even listen to the rest. I hung up. I said, I have to leave. He called like four other times. So I hang up on him. I called my bank right away. <laughs> God is good. The bank said, no one took any money out of your account. They, they, that, there was no transaction. I said to the bank, please cancel this card right away. And then I called a friend. I said, let me get the, the number for um, PayPal. The number she gave me was another number. But mind you, I Googled the number, a number that came up with the PayPal background, but it was a fake number. But it's the same, you know, so um, any one of you that have your PayPal account, just check on it. This is the time of the year. So I'm just testifying of this. Then listen to this part. So after I canceled it and I called one of my friends, she said to me, wait a minute, when did that happen? She checked her email and she got an email that says, Lois Francois canceled the amount that she requested from you on the 25th. Now listen to the email she got. Lois Francois canceled the amount, $30, she requested from you on October 25th. I've never requested any money from my friend. <laughs> so they requested it, this man, whomever, requested on the 25th. It never went through to her. On the 25th, yes, it was the 27th. But after I canceled my bank card, and I, as a matter of fact, I did call PayPal in the new number and I spoke to a lady. I told all that was going on and she said, thank you. So whomever it was, they realized that I was on to them. So then they sent this to my friend. And I said, girl, you know, I she said, I didn't even see the message. So that message never went through to her, but she knew me. She knows me. And if any of you guys receive any message of anybody saying, this is Lois Francois for asking for money, or if they put their name saying, Lois asking for money for loveness, that is not me, people. God is awesome. People are out there in the world trying to steal our money. But when our hope is in God and when our trust is in God, our confidence is in God, he's going to expose them, you know, and that's how the Lord exposed this man yesterday. I don't know. They get all these different numbers and now they try to use the numbers in your area code and your zip code. So after calling me three times with those different numbers, he tried my zip code and I picked it up and there was his voice. He didn't realize what he did and he didn't realize the Lord just exposed him. So to God be the praise. We are God's children and God is going to protect us. So again, whatever we come across, we, we, we trust in God, we serve God faithfully. He is going to stand there for us. He has our angels there surrounding us. He is going to put up those blocks that no one would mess with us. So we send this request to her since the third, 20, uh, on the 25th. She never got it. Why? Because the Lord blocked it. And you know when you send a request, why do we pay PayPal? It goes through. So our God is awesome. He exposed this devourer. And the Lord said he would rebuke the devourer when we tithe. So if you're a child of God and you're not tithing, my brother, my sister, start tithing. The Lord looks out for you. He rebukes the devourer. And that was a devourer that was trying to take my money. So to God be all the praise. So just check your accounts, people out there. Um, It's Christmas time. There are a lot of people doing stuff, but I said, you know what? He hasn't yet seen the end of what he did because I'm a child of God. And you mess with me, man. This is the wrong woman he chose to mess with. God is going to fix him. Whatever he tried to swindle out of me, 
He's already lost more than that. Hallelujah to God be the praise. That's the God I serve. I just boasted him. I boast that in myself. That's the God I serve. You mess with God's child, you mess with God. Whatever is done unto the least of my bread and is done unto me. Anyone tried to steal my money, they're stealing from God. And God is going to take good care of them. So thank you all for listening today, for joining with me. Let's all be prayed up. Cover yourselves, cover your family, and um, be careful as you spend. Um, check your accounts. You know, this is the time of the year, and we know we bless you. As you're tired and you pray over your accounts, your account is sanctified. God is protecting it. No evil would become near you. No plague would come near your dwelling, because God has given his angels charge over you. So be blessed. Thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure. I'm sharing with you the word of God. We'll be back next, next Wednesday at 8 a.m. Be blessed. Love you guys. Remember, our confession for today, we leave with that. I will cleanse myself from everything or of everything that defiles my body and my spirit. And I will strive or I will pursue holiness. I'll strive for holiness or I'll pursue holiness because I fear God. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Be blessed. Let's get into the word because our hope is in the word of God. Thanks again. Have a great day. See you next week at 8 a.m. And listen, share this. Share this word with your friends. Uh, share it on your page so your friends can see it. You don't know this with blessed because sometimes, many times, the enemy has us in bondage and we people are, have a lifestyle and some of them you may not even know what is in their secret lifestyle. And they've been lied to by the enemy and they've been doing it for such a long time. It has become a habit and they don't see anything wrong with it. And so this may be able to put someone in check. To know, listen, if you continue down this path, you're not going to end well. So share it with others. Share it. And those who do not have Facebook, you could tell them to go to my YouTube page. It's Lois Francois YouTube channel. And the video would be there. Thanks again. Be blessed. Have a great day. Take care.